So here are the blades. The Golok from Condor. Cold Steel Magnum Kukuri Machete. Cold Steel Bowie Point Bushman. Cleared a little bit of wood with the uh, Condor already. A few issues with the Condor are noted immediately. Uh, one of them is that it's around, it's floating just above zero today, which means you can see there's even water now on the handle of the Golok. That water on the handle of the Golok makes it quite slippery when it's wet. Now, I'm going to have to fix that when I get back. That's the first time I've really used it in these conditions. Give it a really nice quartz sanding, put some linseed oil on it, and restore some of the grip. The unfortunate thing about this blade, though, is that they're changing it in response to user feedback, which is a good thing. But the changes that they're making to some of the blades in their uh, larger lineup significantly change the function away from the way the traditional blades are designed. And they're not positive. Like, as you can see, the tang on the condor is full thickness and runs right down to the butt. The reason that they did that is because when they first put them out, they had them with partial tangs, just like on a traditional Golox. And they were finding that the end curve or butt was splitting off and they were having cracked handles. So they switched to a more slab handle design to stop that from happening. And what this does is it puts all this weight down here at the end of the handle. Well, it doesn't do you any good when you're carrying it, it's just dead weight. It also doesn't do you any good when you're swinging it, because you have to rotate the end of the handle just like you have to rotate the front of the blade when you're chopping. And this actually slows down the blade. Um, but when you're doing straight up and down cuts, because it adds more mass, it also slows down the blade when you're doing snap cuts. And just makes the blade heavier. Now, of course, the reason that they don't have breakages that commonly in the traditional way they make these is because they drill out, bore out, or burn out the handles and they use split rings on top to hold the wood together. They don't do construction like this. And the other thing that they do is when you're selecting wood, you have to very carefully get the grain of the wood to follow the grain of the handle and wrap around here at the end of the bottom. So ideally, you'd want to use something like a burl or root or end wood uh, for this and not just a piece of relatively straight grain wood. But uh, even with these changes, it's still a pretty decent functional uh, long blade and it's still retaining some of the features of the traditional uh, blades, but even those are being lost in the newer designs. Like you can see here how the blade starts off very thick and then tapers, 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 tapers up to the tip. That is again to give you more versatility because you do power chopping down in this area and you do thinner cutting up through the tip where you're cutting light material. The problem some people were having, as you can see, Condor puts the same width of edge along the blade. And with the same edge width, but varying edge thickness, because the edge is the same thickness of the spine, because there's no essentially primary grind. You end up down here by the base of the blade with an angle around 20 degrees. As you sweep up through, you get an angle of around 10 degrees up around the tip. And that's perfect. It gives you a very versatile blade. You do very, very heavy cutting down here if you have to do coconuts or other type of really hard material. As you move up to where the sweet spot is for wood cutting around the middle of the blade, you're around, say, 12 to 14 degrees. And then as you go towards the tip, it drops right down. And again, you're around 10 degrees for cutting like vegetation. But they were getting some reports of negative feedback because people were using this section up here for very heavy cutting. And with the edge really low at around 10 degrees, it was starting to ripple and dent and turn. So what they did was they took this distal taper right out of the blade and made the whole thing same 20 degree bevel all the way around it now again that stopped the breakages just like making this full tank stopped the breakages but the blades are turning less and less away from the actual performance that they used to be because they're not fixing them properly so our fire now is much more subdued got a nice little bit of coal developing got some old scrap hair wood here to feed that while I'm in the area got a nice little collection of wood starting this is just dead fall. Even with this brief sort of amount of wood, there's a few large differences that are coming out between the Kukuri Machete and the Golok. And the main one is, in this sort of sweep area right here, on the Kukuri Machete, you can feel it trapping the vegetation when you're cutting it. So for example, if you have a tree like that, and you're trying to cut the limbs off, you can start up there in one sweep and the blade keeps contact and keeps coming down, catching off and trimming off, popping off all the branches. And the reason why it happens is you sort of make contact first down here. And as the blade keeps coming down, it traps the vegetation in here and keeps cutting, 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 cutting. 
Now if you try the same thing with the condor, you don't get that hook sort of into the wood. In fact, what tends to happen is when you make first contact down here and you draw the blade towards you as you're rotating, it will tend to slip out of the cut and you don't get as much material cut. Now, you can change your technique to compensate for that. Instead of doing more of a draw or an arc cut, you swing the blade more like an axe and you keep it going straight up and down. But you have to use more force to do that. It's not as comfortable uh, in hand. But a lot of this is technique driven. I mean, if you're more comfortable swinging the larger blades like axe, using a straight up and down motion, you're not going to appreciate the curvature of the kukuri. You're not even going to notice it's there. And in fact, it might actually be annoying because it's actually made more suited for a draw cut where you're pulling the blade towards you. So to me, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. If I'm using the kukuri, I use more of a draw cut. I pull the blade toward me as I'm cleaning down the limbs. When I'm using the condor, I use more of a straight up and down axe cut. At the end of the day, it's two different muscle groups that I'm using. I'm totally comfortable with either one. And it's, you know, six of one, half dozen of the other. The main thing for me right now that I'm preferring the kukuri machete is because the handle is extremely secure when I'm, I'm very comfortable. Whereas the condor essentially isn't. It gets wet immediately because, like I said, it's, it's slightly over zero. So everything is covered in snow. As soon as I hit a piece of wood, snow is coming down. It gets on the handle, it melts. And when the condor gets wet, it gets very slippery. But again, I can fix that with some sanding and some linseed oil. Aside from that, Bodum are two very nice blades uh, for working out here. For cutting up this type of wood. For bucking up this deadfall, trimming off the branches. I easily take both of these over a small axe like a Grand First Brox any day. They're not even in the same class when doing this type of work. The Grand First Brox, yes, it will take down. There's a piece of deadfall back there. Right there. That's dead. So we need to take that down and harvest that. The Grand First Brox will chop that down with the same level of efficiency as the long blades. In fact, it'll do a bit better because the Grand First Brox can work better in tighter areas like that where the longer blades that have to clean up these little sticks that are around here. Had to get all these out of the way first. But once the tree is down, clearing off all the limbs, I mean, a Grand First Brox is taking these off one at a time, pop, 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 right up to the tree. In comparison, the Magnum Kukuri Machete can sweep out the blades over its whole length. It'll take off 10 to 20 of these small branches at a time. So the efficiency is nowhere near comparable. The longer blades are much more functional for this size of wood and cleaning up this. And there's another tree right there. See, it's blown over. We get rid of that one. There's a long, bigger one out there, that one. Of course, you're not in long blade category anymore, working on a tree like that. I want to take up my Iltus Felling Axe, probably, and uh, a decent four foot buck saw to take that one down and process that. But uh, overall, two really excellent blades uh, to be working with. Uh, in comparison, just had the little spare uh, Bowie Point uh, Bushman out. And basically, now in comparison, I also got this little guy out as well. Great little knife. Uh, I put up a video before about how well it does in the kitchen. Kind of surprised me there about how well it performed. And if I didn't have a knife, I'd really appreciate this. It's very lightweight, it's very functional. But comparing it to these, no. I mean, even this type of wood, which is basically between one inch and uh, three to four inches at the base, it's a bit of a task with uh, uh, Bushman. I mean, basically, these longer blades will take, you know, this, these, all these smaller pieces go down in about one hit. And even on uh, the older piece, the larger pieces like this, because we're working mainly on deadfall, they can go through that in five or ten hits. It's dozens and dozens of chops to sort of work through it uh, with the Bushman. And again, it doesn't have the blade length or heft or anything to try to pop off all these multiple limbs. So when you're working with it, it's pop, it's cut by cut for all the small limbs. And if you try to process something like this, and again, the condor and the kukuri machete take off all these limbs easily in one cut. But the cold seal bushman, however, you're chopping them down. I mean, it takes as much effort for the cold seal bushman to say, cut off that branch as it does for the Magnum Kukuri Machete to actually cut down that tree and harvest it. So yeah, if I didn't have a knife, I'd really appreciate having the Coal Seal Bushman, but I would never take it out for this type of work if I had to do any amount of it. Now I'm going to look at it later on, sort of transforming it more into a bill hook, because this does have a shaft suitable for a spear. So I'm going to carve a nice handle, see if I can't uh, secure that. And then I'll have, say we've got a two foot handle on that. It's not really a long knife anymore, but it should be somewhat functional as a bill hook. And that'll be kind of interesting to do. And now my fire has gone right down to a nice bed of coals. 
So now I'll start feeding that back up again. So we got a nice little pile of wood cut up with our two long blades. Cleared up the low lying limbs here. Cleared up a lot of low lying limbs. Cleared up a lot. This is all deadfall. And in short, both of these blades perform very well. They handle very differently. But if you adapt your technique to suit both blades, very nice. The main reason that I would take the Magnum Cucurri machete right now is because the grip is much more secure and comfortable. In this type of weather, where the snow is melting on the grips, the grips are getting wet, the Condor Golok just very slippery in hand. So I'll have to fix that. Not a big deal. Sand it and put some linseed oil on it. The other thing that I've noticed is that with the primary grind put on the cold steel Magnum Cucurri machete, and where now it's finally at the stage where it's able to take and keep a razor sharp edge, a lot of the earlier problems I had with excessive vibration movement stuff are disappearing. The very sharp edge is cutting into the wood very cleanly. The primary grind is allowing the cut to continue very smoothly. So before, with the initial edge, which had the sort of 120 degree bevel, which was very coarse, couldn't get sharp or stay sharp, it felt more like a club. A lot of power and a lot of cutting ability, but it was smashing a lot. Right now, with the very sharp edge, high primary grind, it's much more of a cutting tool, and it's becoming much more comfortable. Now, there's still some vibrational issues. I mean, you take that and you compare it to the Condor, and the Condor is much more rigid. You don't have the vibration issues with that, or a heavy blade like the Hunglis or something that has much more steel in it. But, whereas before, I would have said the vibration in the Magnum Kukari Machete actually made it sort of uncomfortable and was a significant negative factor. So much so that I would have moved it away from sort of heavier wood cutting. Right now, that isn't the case. I can still notice an improvement with heavier blades, but it's not to the point where I would consider it a significant uh, detractor. Like, it's not something when I'm using it that's very unpleasant. You can still notice the effect of it. There's still room for improvement in it. I mean, ideally, this primary grind right here should be extended all the way up to the spine. Not at the same angle. Come off the edge at, say, around 6 degrees. Go up about, say, a quarter of an inch. And then slowly start bringing the angle down. And you'll end up with about, say, a 2 degree primary grind up close to the spine. And that full sort of taper will give you an even better smooth transition into the wood. Will reduce wedging. And uh, also, again, cut down on the vibration. Um, it's a lot of work though to put a full primary grind and that's probably about another hour's worth of work but if the handle holds up and this is still in one piece by about the spring I might actually go ahead and do that because it's turning into a very nice blade for this type of work the only real negative about this knife is that the sheet that it comes with is very difficult to draw the blade in and out of um, I'm probably thinking something like a cross draw or something maybe but it's alright to carry the blade around but when you're working like this um, especially with gloves on it's uh, kind of awkward. In comparison, the Condor goes in and out of a sheet uh, absolutely perfectly. Uh, no issues at all. And my fire's after burning all the way down again. I'm not going to do much more work out here today. I got some other blades I'd like to try out. And still lots of work here that needs to be done. And the next time I come up, I might bring my axe and my saw and get this buddy back here out of the way. Because that's not really a job for a knife. But nice outing today. Take down a nice little pot of wood. Two very nice blades. Can't really ask for much more than that.